okay, in this example, we have a chunk of gold at an initially relatively high temperature, and we're submerging that into water at a lower temperature. And we want to know what is the final temperature going to be. So what's going to happen is the gold at the high temperature is going to lose heat. That heat will be absorbed by the water at the lower temperature. So the temperature of the gold will go down, the temperature of the water will go up, and the temperature will stop changing once those two temperatures equal one another. And at that point, we'll have reached thermal equilibrium. So when we're interested in calculating heat, the equation that we want to use is that heat, or Q, is equal to the mass in grams times the specific heat capacity in joules per gram times degrees Celsius times the change in temperature in either Kelvin or Celsius, whichever we want to use. Uh, for this particular problem, due to the law of conservation of energy, any heat that's lost by the gold is going to be absorbed by the water. Because the gold is losing heat, uh, we'll expect it to be negative. Since the water is absorbing heat, we'd expect the heat to be positive. So the magnitude of, of the two will be the same. They'll just have opposite signs. So I can write that the heat for the water is just equal to the negative of the heat for the gold. And so I'm going to go ahead then and plug in and substitute for Q, I'm going to plug in the mass, the specific heat, and the delta T. So for water, that's going to look like I have the mass of water times the specific heat capacity of water times delta T for the water. Uh, but rather than write delta T, I'm going to write the final temperature minus initial. Remember that whenever I do a delta for any quantity, it's always final minus initial. So I've got the final temperature at thermal equilibrium minus the initial temperature of the water. The gold will look very similar, except I need the negative sign. The mass of the gold times specific heat capacity of the gold times the change in temperature, or the same final temperature, but of course I have a different initial temperature for the gold. Now if I go ahead and plug in my numerical values for these quantities, I have 45 grams of water, the specific heat capacity of water, and then TF is what we're solving for. The initial temperature of the water is 23 degrees. And do the same for the gold. Again, the final temperature is the same. The initial temperature of the gold is just different. All right, so now uh, I only have one unknown, just the TF. I have one unknown, one equation, so I should be able to solve for TF. So the first thing I'll do is multiply 45 times 4.184 times, and then distribute that into the parentheses. And so what I end up with is... I'll do the same thing, I'll multiply negative 25 times 0.128, and then distribute that into this parenthesis, so I'll multiply that result by TF and by negative 80. And when I do that, I get... Okay, so now I want to get TF, uh, the terms together, uh, by itself on the same side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add negative or I'm going to add 3.20 TF to both sides, and then I'll add 43.30 to both sides. And when I do that, I end up with... Now divide both sides by 191.5, and to three significant figures, my final temperature is 24 degrees Celsius. So it's always a good idea to ask ourselves if our result makes sense. Um, in this case, the final temperature is very close to the initial temperature of the water. That might seem odd, but what you want to recognize is the heat capacity of gold is very small relative to the heat capacity of water. So what that means is it takes a lot more heat to change the temperature of water than it does to change the temperature of gold. And so we would expect then that the final temperature would be closer to the water than it would be to the initial temperature of the gold, and that is, in fact, the case.